Hey folks, welcome to Fiddlehead Fiddle Lessons. I'm gonna show you 15 ways to practice the tune Sail Away Ladies. The basic version is. So the idea here is not to feel the need to do all 15 variations, but I want to awaken in you a creative practice urge. I want you to take a journey every time you practice and go deeper with everything instead of consuming lots of tunes and lots of new fancy techniques. I want you to find ways to delve very deep into one thing so that you really enjoy it and get better at the fiddle. Okay, so we're just gonna jump right in. We, and I'm, I organized it by uh, some beginner things that anybody can do, some more intermediate things, and then some things that are advanced and weird, because I'm a kind of a weird guy. All right, with that, let's get started. So the first thing is a very beginner thing. Alternate between a tune and a scale, so you could play G major. And go back to the tune scale. That way you hear the tune in the scale and the scale in the tune. Number two, alternate between listening and playing. So if you have a recording of this, listen to it. Like pretend like the, pretend like I'm listening to it on my phone. And then I'd play. And if possible, do this with small parts, with small little loops. So listen to just the first quarter. And alternate between listening and playing. The third way to practice Sail Away Ladies, simply alternate between singing and playing. So you could do the whole tune, or you could do little bits. Uh, let's work with the B part. So you could play. Do, 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 do. Do. Do, 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 do. Singing the melody helps you visualize it, helps you play better in tune, helps you to remember the tune. If it has words, learn the words. All that helps you remember, but also play the tune better. Fourth way to practice this tune is to find the difficult two note intervals and practice those. So in the A part, Going from A1 to D3 is hard for some people, so just practice that. Make a creative, add rhythms. Maybe slurs. Other intervals would be open A to D3. Open A to D3. E low 2 to A3. That one's pretty hard. Number five, transpose to C major. So instead of starting A1, Start D1. Number six, fingerprinting. Fingerprinting is a term I made up for a process for remembering tunes. It's very simple. You, s you just let say the name of the tune, Sail Away Ladies, and play the f little bit of the A part and a little bit of the B part. Then at the end of your practice session, you do the fingerprint again to seal it in your mind. So we will do that at the end of doing all these variations. I'm gonna say, hey, we have to do the fingerprint one more time and get it in our head. Number seven, the Dronopoly game. So this is my term for playing. You, well, so, so far when we've been practicing the tune in this lesson, I've been using a G drone. And so the Dronopoly game is basically doing other things in that use that root note so we can practice sail away ladies we can practice the scale with whatever variations like georgia shuffle back to the tune but you can also add in other tunes that use the same root note like cash jig even g minor tunes like uh, Opus 57, I think this is called. And then after you've done that, go back to your original tune, Sail Away Ladies. 
Now we'll do some intermediate ways to practice this tune. So we, we transposed to C major, which was relatively easy because it used the same exact fingering. Um, now we're going to transpose to A major, and we're going to start it on A2 instead of A1, which was G, recall. And this will be a little harder because you have to do a bit of translation. It's going to be a totally different fingering. In this case, it's not super hard. Some other keys would be a lot harder, but there's still a lot of open strings, all right? Number nine, add droning double stops. So for this tune, you can drone the string to the left back in G major. I'll do it slow. So we're just adding an extra double stop note, but an open string. Number 10, add two finger chordal double stops. So this is a lot more challenging. So for the A part, we would add a, when we play the first note, I would add a D3. And I can just hold that a little bit. So there's all kinds of different ways to do double stops. They're called different voicings as one term. And, and so you can experiment with harder double stop voicings is the idea of this practice variation. The B part, D3 and A3, and so on. So I'm not gonna exhaustively go into how to do it. I'm just trying to open your mind to other ways and things you can do with these tunes. So one more fun intermediate thing you can do with this is to turn your fiddle into a mandolin, holding it like this, or like a guitar, but because it's the same strings as a mandolin, I like to think of it that way, and, and play the chords sing the melody. So for this one you can do G for almost the whole thing. So it's it's not it's a little easier perhaps. And to play the G you would play A1 and E low 2. You can find there's you can easily find uh, mandolin chords anywhere on the internet in about 0.5 seconds. Okay, so as promised, we're going to do a few somewhat more advanced and weird ideas for ways you could practice this tune, just to spark your imagination. So one is you could combine strumming with the melody, strum melody. What I like to say. So basically, you're trying to pluck the melody, and as much as possible, be strumming chords. So. mandolin player or follow mandolin, this is like no big deal. Mandolin players do this in their sleep, but it's an idea that might be novel to you as a fiddler. And learning these, I'll just, we're going to move on to other stuff, but learning a little bit about mandolin chords really can help you with learning tunes and understanding how music works. So if you're an intermediate level player, I recommend starting to mess with chords. And it's uh, something I've taught on the Fiddlehead site, but that I want to return to because I think I could teach it better and present it better. Okay, so just three more variations. Uh, the number 13 is blues. So we can just take the basic melody and add kind of uh, blue notes.
number 14 convert this major melody to a minor key. So this may be the weirdest thing on the list. So basically go from this happy and using, using the, the notes of the G Aeolian mode, such a music nerd, you can turn it into a, a darker sounding tune. when you play it slower it sounds more ominous and dark I mean it adds some schmaltzy vibrato uh, if we play it faster it might sound more fun almost like a klezmer tune in a way so to get that variation, you would just need to learn the G Aeolian mode. Open one, low two, three. Open low one, low two, three. Three. Open low one, low two, three. Low four, E low one, E low two. So that's a flash lesson on that. I plan on doing more mode lessons too. So we have some on the Dorian scale and on pentatonic scales on the site as well. Number 15, turn this reel into an Irish jig. So the basic tune was. So let's see if I can remember how to do this. So that's pretty fun. Uh, the, the problem with showing you guys this is that there's not, it's not as an easily graspable thing on how to, to turn a reel into a jig. It, it's not as, as easily teachable. Uh, the thing I will say though is you can get a feel for doing this if you diligently practice the scales with, with jig type variations. So you, if you simply take a, take um, any scale like G major for this which is for this tune and and play with triplets you can also do like a long short pattern you can also combine those two like triplet plus a long short and then you can do melodic variations that have triplet patterns like one that I teach is one, two, three. We go one, two, three, one, two, three. And that's what really opens the mind to kind of creating jigs from reels. Because if you just do this uh, melodic variation on any scale, it starts to sound like a jig. Okay, so we've done all 15 ways to practice this tune, Sail Away Ladies. But remember, we're done. I'm going to go have a cup of tea. But before I finish and walk away from the fiddle, you want to seal the tune in your mind using the fingerprinting. So I think I was number four or five on the list. And so, so basically, the fingerprinting practice is you say the name of the tune. And now let's, let's add the scale because it helps to connect tune and scale. So I'll we'll say, sail away ladies in G major, A part. Just a few notes from the A part, B part. And we're done. And then when we pick up tomorrow, we'll practice the same tune tomorrow. You'll look at your music journal. So you'll, you'll know exactly what you did today when you practice tomorrow and be like, okay, I did this and then I'll do the fingerprint tomorrow and I'll do work on all those same variations I did, maybe do another one. So each day you get a little further and, and then the fingerprinting will help you remember it. So 
it's kind of a maybe the most powerful one because anybody could use this even advanced players may have trouble remembering certain tunes or remembering the name it's a good way to remember the name of a tune you may you know I there's a lot of tunes I remember and I don't remember the name anyway so this has been a lot of fun for me just messing around with this tune with you guys give me feedback let me know what was clear what was not and it sure has been fun teaching you all and getting to know some of you through zoom meetings so I look forward to chatting again soon and have a good day go to fiddlehead.com for a progressive step-by-step -step course outline, color-coded tabs, play-along tracks, sheet music, and much more. Thanks for watching the video. Excellent. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.